hasn't actually started. There we go. Now it's restarted back up. Okay, we'll see what you guys get from that. But uh, it definitely seems to have had issues in between. So not to worry. Anyway, let's get back to the game. Jat, how do you think it's going? I mean, these have been two or three incredibly very, very tight uh, yeah. team fights. And when, every, when, when this starts happening in a, in a game where every fight is just absurdly close, it's almost, you try to look at each team comp and say, okay, slowly everyone's just gaining more gold and progressing slowly to their late game builds. Which team will have the advantage eventually? Like, which team will progress the most? And right now I feel like CLG's comp, just because of, you know, the 20% damage reduction for Maokai and the fact that Sivir and Cassio have so much AoE, progress a little bit faster than MTL does. But it's still really, really close because both teams have a lot of kind of pick potential. And even if one team gets a small advantage, if they get, you know, picked in a bad place or, you know, do a, a bad engage and get counter engaged on really hard, then, you know, they'll just lose the game right there. So, you carry on, Jat. I'm just keeping things, keeping things, checking up, uh, things ticking over here. It looks like everybody's Absolutely. managed to rejoin the stream. So, I guess, oh, it's all working fine again. Excellent. So, uh, Yay. hopefully everything's back to normal. I don't know what's happening amongst that. First time in two days, so it's all good. Uh, yeah, so and one, one thing to keep in mind here: the the only big item that anyone's completed since the last team fight is Morgana actually managed to finish Death Cap. So that could make a big difference when she goes into the next fight. If it'll be interesting to see if they wait until Morgana's flashes up, just so she can guaranteed land a really good one, since that's such an impactful skill in these fights. And she's actually the only one in the game who, uh, along with Sona, who doesn't have the flash. So COG has all their flashes, whereas MTL is still down two. So if, if COG force something really quick here, they could potentially get a fight where they have the flash advantage, but it's probably not going to happen. So all the ultis are back up that I can see. Anything that's important? Yes, they are. So again, another intense team fight probably going to follow, which you guys have probably not been able to watch, but nevertheless, this is yeah, a very tight game. In this game have been incredibly intense because there's so much build-up in between fights, and since everyone's just waiting for the absolute perfect time to go in, that when they happen, like I said before, everyone has all their skills, and they're really crazy. And as it stands, I mean, as it gets later and later in the game, which it is, it's it's getting there, we're at 48k to 44k, who do you think is going to have the bigger advantage as we slowly claw our way into endgame? Right, I think that COG has just the slight edge just because I feel like Sivir and especially with the item path he's taking, you know, having no wriggles and going straight into the Infinite Agent Phantom Dancer. And, ew, fight oh, maybe. They're going to they're gonna go for that one, surely. They've put enough damage down there. This time they will have to force MTL. Are going to... Yeah, COG wisely getting the hell out of there. They realize they're taking just a few too, too many hits on the, the summoner, so they're immediately backing away. They're not going to be able I don't to follow this could, up. I don't know if you could hear that noise there, but a couple people on CLG just use their pots, so they're really ready to fight here. They they have some elixirs that they just consumed, I think. Oh, you have some really good hearing. <laughs> it was I, I heard two people drink elixirs, and I don't know if they're on CLG or if they're on MTL. I can't tell. I just heard them. I can see agility. I can see blue. Oh, Riven actually diving in there. They've tried to go in towards Svenska. They're trying to pick him out there. Oh, they managed to land the Cassio ulti again across them. Wicked has gone down in amongst all that though. So Slepper is continuing to get, lay that damage down. He's targeting actually on towards the LP. Maybe a little bit too focused targeted there because he needs to switch around. Has gone towards Crepo. They're a little bit misfocused from, from MTL. And I feel that's what's losing them this fight. Lee Sin had to back well away from that one. Prepared also backing away. And Slepper couldn't seem to quite focus a target and well I'm not too sure if you should have pulled the blue there either but uh, CLG, a one one. CLG came out so well in amongst that yeah but it was just a one for one that whole fight and something that's so weird about these team fights is we're having these you know three four minute gaps between team fights but in all of these fights neither of the AP carries have blue and both Morgana and Cassiopeia ran out of mana that fight and it just dragged it on they both could do nothing after their initial burst Frogan might just catch Lee Sin. Nope, they're going to go for... Uh, yeah, they're going to force a burn because, I mean, they have the blue buff and they realize Morgana hasn't shopped yet, so she is not really a character right now. Yeah, she's just a basic attack. Oh, does manage to catch Frogger, though. And along with the ulti from Slepper, will it be enough? No, just... From Pogma is just enough. It's almost... It, it fooled CLG of getting off. If they just would have kind of persisted and stayed on, they didn't realize how... that. Kogma used the last bit of his mana using those two R's and that Morgana was completely out of mana and that Lee Sin was really low. They didn't know these things because they didn't have, you know, perfect vision up there. And, you know, they just had to back away because uh, lack of knowledge and they were quite low, so they got scared. The benefit of hindsight that we get from spectator mode is always a great thing. And we do see quite a lot more than the team sees. It's like not until they actually... Oh, yeah, it's 
way easier to spectate and be like, this is exactly what they should have done if they could see the whole map. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Okay. Which is why they kind of watch the the teams do watch them back as well. They watch the watch the matches back, uh, obviously with the with the full vision. And they're like, oh, if only we'd have done that. Which is all well and good after the fact, but uh, that is a quick dragon pulled straight away by MTL. So that's going to stretch their gold only slightly though. They're still still being kept pretty honest by CLG, and these team fights is sooner or later there's going to be an ace, and and it's going to turn yeah. the entire game because I think. Whoever wins and I was, I was giving the advantage to CLG a little bit early, but I, in that last fight in particular, Froggen of CLG landed pretty much a perfect Cassiope ult. I think she stunned three or four people and then landed their AoEs afterwards. And they still didn't really win the fight that hard, so I'm a little worried about their actual power, because I don't think they're going to land ults that good every fight. But I think that was, was Slepper obviously burned his heel in amongst that. Oh, Snoopy's dived on towards Angus there. Black Shield actually managed to put down them. They're caught Wicked out in amongst all this. So counter straight away. Malko's ulti trying to protect them on the escape there. And they're going to back away from it again. And another very close engage, but nobody going down. Oh, Yo, yeah, the piece we called out. That will go for that one. Oh, just under way across. I think Extinct will get popped there. CLG now in the advantage. And Semtio realizes Slepper's getting caught out. He's going to get picked. Ripped apart, Svenska's gonna go down as well, and that will be CLG now coming out on top. Yeah, the pings go down, gotta go for oh Baron right now, but Snoopy is down to nothing, wicked very low, and uh, well, they've gotta be very careful who they choose to tank from this one, but MTL can do nothing about it. And it just goes to show how much these team comps are reliant on counter initiation because immediately, as it seemed that MTL had a good wave initiated and they made to commit, they just immediately lost because both these teams are so much better at stopping teams from initiating than initiating themselves. So we've just seen Harry coming across here. Yeah, he's like, no, nah, he can't get in and steal that one. So, CLG with a full Baron now. That's going to put them in the driving seat. Gold almost even, just a 1k difference, which is nothing winning 50k. And anything with the builds now that really is standing out, certainly the team comps, obviously, after it's such a... You know what turned out to be a pretty good engage from MTL. They managed to. Well, I have to say, Yellow Pete. Pete's QSS basically won them the game at that point yeah. because Morgana landed her binding and it was like, oh my god, I have to go in right now. And it's like, as soon as he made Morgana flash in, he waited to to cleanse the bind. But as soon as Morgana flashed in, he was like, lol, QSS blocked the all with the spell shield and just crushed him, <laughs> which is really nasty to see. But it, you know, it highlights the the advantage of the Quicksilver Sash. It's just. One of yeah, those because things. it's it's totally unexpected, right? Uh, you don't necessarily keep track of when people complete their QSSs, and mentally, when you land a binding on their juicy AD carry like that, you just have this this inkling that you have dive. to go finish it right <laughs> away. Straight dive in, and actually, they caught out Snoopy just before that, and they're kind of backing away. But yeah, the fact that they'd all gone through the Maokai ulti as well. The thing is, Snoopy has also built a Quicksilver Sash, so I mean, he could be baiting as well. You never know. It's just Quicksilver Sash. And very tricky and play. Like this, this game is is hinging on such small things. So Baron, they're going to push up with this Baron. Probably take this turret down very quickly. Frog and they're taking some damage with a quick catch. Slepper's very quick at the spot. As soon as that dark binding lands, and I think they kind of want to use the turret advantage here. But Yellow Pete, they're backing away now. The Silver Ulti. The thing is, they're trying to engage again, and they, they they can't. They can't. They're so just going to get kited them. and taken too low. And they're doing, oh, beautiful turns around Froggen straight away. The co communication's coming straight over, and that is going to be a very, very dead MTL, I feel, for in, in amongst all this one. CLG managed to bait them out brilliantly, and wow, what a turnaround. They knew that was coming, and the communication's like, Froggen, I'm going to do it now. And the whole team just instantly reacted, caught them all within that ulti. I think there was about three or four definitely in it, but just, uh, I think yeah, that's GG. Perfect. <laughs> and and then, it, the thing is, he must have hit all those pretty much at max range. Like, those were really far away from his ultimate. I believe his ultimate's a 700 range, and they were definitely not that much closer than that. That was, you know, a, a tenth of a second earlier, and he would have whiffed that entirely. <laughs> so knowing his distances, knowing his hero perfectly prepared, is going to back away from that one. Turrets will go down, I think the Nexus will follow. I'm not too sure whether MTL are going to be able to pull anything dramatic out at the end there. No, it will be a dead Nexus, but a very, very tight match here, Jat. We're on for a best of three series. What could be an epic match? Yeah, this up? could be awesome because that game was, again, just one of the closest games we've possibly seen. CLG did a really good job of just hanging in there because they were down so many kills early and then they're just like, you know what, we're better in team fights, and we, you know, we know how to play this because uh, I think they recognized sooner than MTL did that 
the team who engages these fights is going to lose. And MTL continually tried to engage on CLG, and CLG punished them for it. And I think that was really the key to the game. So let's have a quick look down the uh, the CS, the builds, what they did, and really where, where it turned, do you feel? It's really strange. I feel like it turned in large part once Cassiopeia got her death cap, and once uh, once Sivir obviously got her items in her QSS, because right at the, like at the very end of the game, Cobb finally caught up to Sivir in items because of that wriggle start, and you know, Sivir also had a QSS and apparently a wit's end, which is just actually a really great counter to double AP because at this point now uh, Morgana and Ari, you know, they actually can't burst them, and people were saying on stream even Saint Fishes earlier, and this is just sort of a rumor. It's like you run Maokai against double AP because you make it so they can't burst you. Because double AP is so much front-loaded damage and very little sustained damage, especially with things like Morgana. So if they had the Maokai ult down kind of when Morgana was going into initiate, they'd be able to just kind of barely withstand that as we saw in a lot of fights and they were kind of around low. And then they could turn the fight and win. So it maybe was a comp-specific thing, but it was also just really crisp play. And uh, <laughs> Froggen stating that Danish people feed. Now Froggen is Danish as well, so Froggen and Wicked actually did, <laughs> did give up <laughs> 13, uh, 12 yeah. of those kills. And if you remember when it was uh, like 2 kills to 10, I think 8 of them were concentrated on the Danish people. So, <laughs> so well, let's go have a quick break and we're going to go yeah, straight back into the next match. The guys, uh, I can see a few of them were still in that uh, championship select, so I'm guessing... Uh, yeah, the match is not quite filled up yet, but obviously they have this three-minute gap over us, so they have a, a lot less break than we do, a lot bigger break, so to say, than we do. So uh, don't go in there, guys. Hopefully the stream has sorted itself out. I think it did towards the end now after a restart. Not too sure what quite happened in amongst that, but uh, I would definitely keep my eye on it. I have I have my man in the know that's uh, keeping, it, keeping it going. So uh, we'll be back in a sec, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll... Going to be going straight back into the third match, or second match, should I say. I'm, I'm getting excited. I want a third match. Uh, a second match of MTL versus CLG. If you missed it earlier, Moscow 5 took the finals. And, well, they've gone into the finals 2-1. Very, very close matches throughout these. It's really setting up to be a fantastic couple of matches. Don't go anywhere, guys.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is D-Man bringing you all the action. Alongside me is Jat, making me look good. <laughs> Jat, um, we've had some fantastic matches today, um, and that was just another very tight, that one tight, was close just one. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, these are all going 40 minutes. It's it's weird because we had Kiev a week ago on. I mean, one patch behind, and obviously a couple different teams where everything was going, you know, 22 minutes, 24 minutes, 26 minutes, just kind of these snowball-y, crazy, dominant games. And then, what is this? Just, just, yeah, just as everyone Seven said. days later, a week later, we're having a, an entire semifinal round filled with these 40-minute best-of-three, you know, back-and-forth crazy games. And it's, it's, it just goes to show that, uh, you know, not everything's figured out yet, right? Well, These teams are just really evenly matched. And it shows just how uh, how good a game LOL is at the end of the day. The meta can change. You know, everybody was saying, oh my god, we're going to have this for like the next month or something. There's going to be crazy invades all over the map. It's going to be insane. And yet, we've really not seen that many of them. It's just been very tight, incredibly yeah, close like, matches. Teams are doing really good jobs so far at uh, stopping what I kind of like to call snowball plays. So when teams get small advantages... You know, they try to just keep taking those small advantages and, you know, daring people to fight them. But at the same time, in any of those plays where you want to dare people to fight them, you're putting yourself at a small disadvantage already, right? Because you're just trying to take advantage of the lead you already have. But teams are not letting them get to the point where those plays work necessarily. Like, uh, in that last game, Mistral had a lot of early kills in lane, but CLG managed to stop that from snowballing because they got a lot of global gold for their team. Right, so if there were ever kind of snowball team fight plays, the overall gold was never that far apart. Even though CLG was behind in kill gold, their team overall still kind of had enough, and they just you know held on you know, just long enough until MTL basically got impatient and you know engaged on them so, in you know a dis disadvantageous situation, and CLG turned on it. But I mean, there were so many ridiculously close fights in in, in that game that it really could have. It could have hinged on anything, you know. One, you know, poor Zanya's one binding that lands that doesn't get dodged. If Snoopy wouldn't have flashed two of those bindings at the last freaking millisecond, he would have been dead and lost his oracles right away. And if the Cassio so ulti would have been just that tiniest little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Or if, or if a couple people would have turned away because it's, it's a little finicky sometimes how exacting you have to face that ulti to actually get stunned and how easy it is to just barely turn your back on it sometimes. Really, just a lot of close, close stuff in that last game. It was crazy. And do you think that's a case of the level of of lol is simply picking up that, that these fact that, they, that what's turning these games is the very tightest of margins now? Yeah, I think so. I mean, these two teams, especially, and even the teams we've been watching Europe this weekend, are just really, really good. So we're not really seeing anyone. It's like, oh, he doesn't know how to play that character. He's just he's just messing up. It's like teams know a lot of the matchups better than they did previously. They have substantially more games on these characters, like Cassiopeia has been out for you know really long time now. People have played her tons and tons. So not only does the people playing them know exactly what the character does, but a lot of times the uh, people playing against those champions know exactly what's going to happen. So there's a lot of sort of mind game and prediction going on, and it's, it's leading to some really exciting play when everyone's you know, flashing at the last second over wall and you know, popping Zonis just at the right time and things like that. And there's, I think there's still a lot to come as well. <laughs> it's just looks like it looks like. I mean, we have potentially two more games in this set, and then we'll have you know. And the thing is, with how close both of these semifinal games have been, the uh, the third fourth place match, which a lot of times is fairly often downplayed, is probably going to be really awesome because the third and fourth place teams, you know, Cipher just about took out M5, and this game, you know, hinged on almost anything. The third fourth place game is also going to be really really good. So, after seeing such a, an incredibly close game, you're still sticking with CLG. I mean, obviously they've won that 1-0, but MTL certainly put in a very, very good show in there. Yeah, they definitely did. I, I almost have to, just because CLG uh, were losing that early game, and just because they sort of understood, I felt like, uh, the overall purpose of the two comps better, and were, were the ones playing, like I've said many times, the counter-initiation game, more than MTL was. So I feel like CLG lost the early game and then used the fact that they just kind of knew their comp better to win the game. That I feel like if they don't lose the early game, then they have a much better chance of capitalizing on that and winning than MTL does. Okay, so we'll find out shortly. We're just waiting for them to start. Looks like uh, they will be going in their bait success. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whoever... If, if somehow the... Who was it that... It was the Sivir, so... Yeah, Yellow Pete, if he was just like, you know what, I'm going to get hit by a binding and then QSS and Spell Shield when she flashes into alt. Like, if he said that, 
you know, five seconds before that happened on vent, then, you know, that would probably be the most impressive thing ever. I don't quite think that's what happened, but he still did a great <laughs> job of reacting to what happened. So we are getting underway. So bans and picks begin immediately. Wicked is targeted with the Aurelia ban of Vladimir taken out because, well, it's very strong at the moment, which I'm interested to see just why, yeah. um, the breakdown of why people think it's now incredibly strong. Because actually we saw uh, Vladimir actually struggling for the Darien. Yeah, it, it's true. Um, <laughs> at the same time, though, with how close that last game was and how the game just kind of hinged on you know, the teams playing, I almost expect them to do exactly the same bans this game as they did last. And maybe not even that much to change during picking, because I don't think any team really thinks they did something wrong in champs like that game. And there's nothing really they feel like they can improve upon. So it's probably going to be the same bands as last game, which will potentially be Anivia here and then Rise for CLG. Okay, so but Ramos, we shall Ramos has been banned out, I think, the whole tournament. Pretty much. There was a couple games in the group stage where he was not banned out, and he actually lost the games. But in general, yeah, teams have been keeping him in, uh, in ban jail. So, ban prison. Actually, a Sivir man, so wow. they, uh, MTL was not impressed with how well Sivir scaled in the late game <laughs> that time, and how much, uh, it was really, every time MTL would try to reverie in, she was just, Sivir was too fast, and uh, the, the ultimate or whatever was potentially what won COG that game, so I, I definitely understand that ban. And hopefully now that Anivia has finally been left open, we can see some Anivia play for the first time this tournament. So, Rai is taken out as well, which is Actually, something we've seen lately, and you know, we've talked about it before, so it's like Rise in solo queue just doesn't really <laughs> happen yet in, when it comes to games. He's, he's getting bad yeah, Interestingly a lot. enough, though, uh, Teddy R.O., the uh, sort of the top ranked U.S. player who's not on a team, has been grinding the hell out of Rise in solo queue. And <laughs> he's kind of maintained his rank one with it. So it's, it's definitely strong in all areas. It just may not be very, he just may not be very played in solo queue. When TL switch into Sona, well, that's going to be going yeah. with it. And with some funky... Uh, Revive Surge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the heck is that? Might as well throw Promote in there. To see if you recognize it. So what is CLG going to go with? They took... Um, what were their first picks last time? It was and obviously we, we didn't see the cow in there. Um, the, they, they picked Sivir really okay. early last game. And it might have been Cassiopeia. I'm not entirely sure. It might have been Maokai as well. There might have been. It might have been Sivir Maokai. Okay, there's a there's a good there's a good shout. Uh, Anivia is available. Yeah, absolutely. It. Uh, I don't feel like they'll pick it early. I don't think anyone in no. Mister plays Anivia, so they're just gonna. If anything, Froggen is already in the fifth pick slot, and they have the last pick, so they might just wait for the Solomid to counter pick, at the very end. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, Pete's gonna take Cogmore, which is Cog Janna, maybe a Jungle Alster again. Oh, more Riven. Picking the top lane or early on there. We'll have to ask Wicked if uh, Riven is his third favorite top laner behind Aurelia and GP, because it seems like it so far during these picks. I think he's more the security, surely, than you know the, the fact that he can sustain stay in lane for a long time. Doesn't can, can't I would say can't get bullied out. Did get bullied a little bit in the last one, but uh, can stick around mm -hmm. for a long time. <laughs> okay, Graves. We've not seen Graves for a while, which. No, we really haven't. It's been all about the Sivir and Kog'Maw and then, you know, a little bit of Kennen from M5. Yeah, which is... And then you look at... Uh, as I guess Chaos was pretty much on Graves a lot. Uh, Exclusively, yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a change in the game, the way things are going. Okay, Aria again. So, and locked in as well. So that could be an Aria mid this time, or it could be an Aria up top. I wasn't convinced towards the late game how... Uh, yeah, it was questionable was. how well Aerie was actually doing late game. I know she doesn't have the same powerful ratios as some of the other AP characters, just because giving you know a ranged AP assassin really high ratios would be a little bit destructive to the game, I think. So they, she does struggle a little bit with the really super late game scaling, which is what that game turned into. So I'm just squeezing that graphic around. We'll put it there, that'll do. There you go can see what's going on. Anyway, this is the Kings of Europe. It is uh, sponsored by Asusamist. Make sure I sponsor them because without them this tournament wouldn't be happening and Chips and Noy have put it all together. So a big thanks to them. So it's looking like the cow could be coming out. So this is what we've seen Snoopy on this in the group stages. He was pretty much fantastic on Alistair. And, uh, and it was interesting. Ale Alex's point of view, actually, he, he did said he didn't really like it on support either. He prefers it in the jungle. Yeah, he was like, I like it in the jungle. He's like, well, oh, okay. It makes oh, sense. Oh, okay. Cogmore Janna down bottom lane. 
Okay, so what AP will they go with? Will it be a double AP? Will it be a bruiser this time? Will they have Ari in the mid? Well, they've called it early and it's looking like a nocturne in the jungle. Which yeah, I worry about Mistral here if they do end up locking in nocturne because they'll need to get a lot of sort of late game hyper carry with their last pick here if they want to run with this lineup because like we said last time Ari doesn't necessarily scale amazingly Kog'Maw out outscales Graves for sure um, it'll be it'll be interesting and Janna you know is a slightly better team fight her hero than Sona what are they going to do for their sort of hyper carry if they're going to be going with Nocturne here and it's Kennen you know they have to win this game early if they're going to go with this lineup. And it's not, not to say that it's not a very strong early game lineup, but they don't really have anything that's a late hyper carry. So if COG can stall it, then they'll win automatically. So MTL going in early, and there is Insta lock in Anivia. So I know. Bam! He was like, alright, I can do this. I can lane against Ari or Kennen. I'm good. And we're finally seeing some Anivia. People have been banning it, so we'll see how scary Froggen's Anivia really is. And there was quite a lot of people excited about this, anyway. <laughs> I know that. Oh, uh, plenty. I, I even remember reading threads like, Stop banning Anivia, I want to watch it. And apparently, it's actually, like, Riv Riven's been listen. picked to take it away from Angus, so... I'm not so sure about taking it away from him, because it was like fourth pick. So it was, okay. it was quite a long way down. It wasn't like it was taken away from him pretty early on, so... Well, no, they took... Uh, didn't they take Riven... Uh, Cog were, with their first two picks or oh, something? Oh, was it the first two picks? Yes, it yeah, was actually. It was the first two. No, yeah, yeah, I'm with, yeah, you're right. <laughs> they've they've shuffled it round since. Uh, and now Mistral is taking in a double AP comp again, which uh, I mean, it, it'll definitely be interesting. Like I said, uh, I feel like they need to win early or at least get a substantial advantage. Otherwise, COG will just kind of overpower them late. So this is the second match in the series. It is going to be Mistral Gaming versus CLG. If you missed it earlier, well. You've missed a a first awesome game in this matchup, which was has uh, seen some just pretty much top power plays from many many players across the board, namely the uh, the ulti from Froggen towards the end there, the Cassiopeia ulti. But uh, you've also missed out on Moscow Five versus Cipher, which frankly were three very close riveting games, apart from the last one, which kind of went one-sided. But two forty-plus minute games as well, and they have been some very strong games. So Moscow Five are awaiting in the final. Who will join them? Currently, CLG one 0 up, like we say, and. Judging by the teams, what are you going with here? This is this is looking like CLG's team to me. Yeah, I mean, if we had to break it down a little bit, we have the Ari vs. Riven matchup, which I'm sure Wicked would love a second shot at without dying at level 1. And I'm a little interested to see how that how that's going to go, because last game, at least in the laning phase, the Ari Angus had a huge edge on Wicked and just kind of dominated him in that lane. As well as even uh, Mistral's mid lane. Like, they, they, they essentially won mid and top uh, last game, and so I think we're going to be seeing Kennen mid against Anivia, which will be pretty scary for Anivia if I could, if I had to say, uh, Anivia's not that strong one through five, and really her her strength comes just from her sort of team fight control, and you know once she gets blue buff, you know picks with walls and things. But in lane, she's a little scary, and Kennen is a s extremely extremely strong laner, so that's a little bit scary. And then we have another one of these Janna lanes, which CLG's done really well with in the past. Because, the, you know, Yellow Pete has managed to keep his health high enough. He'll start Cloth 5, he'll probably build Wriggles. And they'll, if they get through the laning phase unscathed, which Sona Graves is, you know, really trying to scathe them, you know, be super powerful early and just try to take them out of the game. If they stop that from happening, then come team fight late game, the Cog Jan is going to just kind of roll over the Sona Graves. So it really all just comes down to MTL having to win almost every matchup early on. Otherwise, I feel like they're going to lose. Well, it is possible, and we're hoping, last time we saw an early attempt at strats, which was Cypher, it kind of backfired horribly. So, But then again, we've seen Moscow 5 having some stomping first early game stages. And, uh, yeah, MTL absolutely. Actually, I mean, it's definitely possible. But, I mean, you got to remember, MTL started, there was 6-1 up, I think. I think maybe 8-2. Yeah, two, it was 6-1 well. or 8-2, but they were losing towers, which is what mm. was keeping CLG in the game. I think they'll realize that and potentially push a little harder this game. So Extinct versus Froggen in mid, and you know, Anivia's actually a pretty slow-moving hero against the Oh Kennen. yeah, Slowbird is actually one of her nicknames. Mm. I think. She, she was either 295 base move speed at one point, and they might have buffed it up to 300, but she is definitely amongst the slowest characters in the game, base. 
just kind of crawl around. Okay, so you're going with CLG in this one as well, I guess? I'm going to go with CLG again, yeah. I do like their sort of... I, I just like their team comp as far as team fights go, and I think that they're good enough and are experienced enough to be able to get by in the laning phase and not fall far behind. Okay, so as we get underway here, you can, of course, tune in to watch the VODs. If you've missed any, they'll be on the Ogaming TV channel, which you're probably watching on right now, which is ogaming.tv. There's also going to be available on the YouTube channel, which is mine, which is 4DMAN, which is a number 4 and DMAN. And, of course, Chips and Noy, who are hosting this event. They are the French casters. You can also catch it in French. The stream is going on in French. So, um, all thanks to those, and thanks to Asus, the sponsors, for making this tournament possible, which has been pretty much two epic games of LOL so far. Um, don't forget there is the third, fourth place playoff. That's going to be coming up tomorrow. And the finals, the grand finals, are actually happening on, on Tuesday night. So, or Tuesday daytime, depending on where you are in the world. Or could be middle of the night if you're in Australia and watching, which is entirely possible. And, you know, you've got to remember there's a, a huge range of uh, people watching this. I've had... Yeah, I've huge seen, amounts of time zones and everything. I've seen people watching. They've sent pictures. They're watching it. There's a guy watching it with his son. There's, you know, there's. You can have, like we say, the students. So we really have to make this so accessible for everyone. It's not just a case of, you may know this certain hero like the back of your hand and. X Y Z is playing it wrong, and why are you not telling the world that they're playing it wrong? We kind of have to put a broad spectrum on there, which I feel Jat is doing a fantastic job. So I'm, I'm grateful for him to be here, and I'm sure you guys are. So feel free to shoot, show your appreciation for uh, his and my work um, over on the Reddit streams, the Twitter streams, the whatever else. You could even be on the chat. I'm not. I think there must be a chat going on on the own TV yeah. somewhere along the line. So. Uh, Jat, we are getting underway. I'll give a quick roster rundown for the people that are unaware and have just tuned in because there is generally a influx of people that happen to come in. It's like, the game started, everybody quickly piles on the stream, so it tends to happen. <laughs> so uh, it is going to be MTL starting in the blue side. It is going to be, we think, at the top. It's going to be Angus again on uh, Ari up the top there against Wicked on Riven. Actually had a very good start in the last game against Riven. It'd be interesting to see how that one starts out. Doesn't want to give up the first blood early on. In the mid lane, it is going to be Extinct, which will be Kennen versus Froggen on Anivia. And you can see both teams are doing completely the opposite. Both teams are invading essentially at the same spot. Like, they're both going through the double goal and tri bush, and they're just, you know, completely missing each other. It'll be interesting to see where the CVs go, go down. Um, okay, Janet just used CV. I don't know where he cv Did he catch them or did he whiff? No, he, he did I it. I can't uh, tell. He did it actually on the bush. Uh, the, the on the bush they were going yeah. into? Yeah, so straight on. Okay, the so bush. both teams actually just did sort of offensive CVs and just made sure that they weren't in. I, I think they're both expecting to run into each other at any second, but they could not be farther away from each other. Yeah, and which actually would see how much they actually invade, whether they just take everything. Yeah, uh, it, it depends, like, how greedy or how scared they actually become. And, uh, MTL port yeah. in. MTL port in CLG are not, so CLG may well just come out, yeah, fully on top of this. Right, well, it's just. And there are they, they seem to be just completely backing off and not trying to steal anything. Yeah, they have no idea where each they other They just kind are. of, I guess they kind of lost the game of chicken and they're just like, you know what, we're, we're out of here. Yeah, only Wicked's back for CLG, so they're going to take the golems away. Uh, okay, Blue. It'd be interesting to see if they only take one. Blue ping here, Slepper's going to come around the corner any second now and go, whoa, back away, yeah, straight away. Oh, they're going to take both. And he, oh, we tried to bookshot and steal the last one, but... Uh, so blue buff's going to go to MTL. I don't think they're going to invade for the red. No, CLG are going to back away. So pretty standard stuff. So let's have a look down the bottom lane. Like I say, it is going to be prepared and slept, that's going to be Sona and Graves for Mistral Gaming. And meanwhile, for CLG will be Yellow Pete. And joining him will be Janna, which will be Crepo. And it is going to be Snoopy in the jungle yeah, on Alistair. actually did mix up the lanes a little bit. We're actually seeing Extinct oh, yes. on Kennen top against Driven, and they're throwing the Arya mid. Ah, okay, and obviously Wicked would have expected it, so has he bought items? No, he's just gone straight with the boots and pots, which is um, pretty much covering but off. But regardless, if you look, Wicked knew he was going to be laying against an AP hero, and Wicked is one of the big people who do this. He will rune exclusively for his matchup, and he has 54 magic resist to start the game. With no magic resist items. So plus 24 from runes and masteries. And bottom lane is going to be a kill! Very quick kill as well, and that was Snoopy coming out of the jungle and immediately first blood going down on Janna. I'm also looking towards Froggen at the moment because he's got um, Svenskren just above him. Now he's going to come around, missing the Ice Blast. He's going to get the Fear Proc go off. I don't think he's going to quite have enough to finish him off because Angus has fell a little bit behind. He will surely egg him. No! 
didn't manage to pop the rebirth, which is really what they wanted to do. Meanwhile, Slepper being forced out down the bottom there by Yellow Pete will manage to get the slow across him and do a big chunk with that uh, W, which it is the Arcane Barrage, is it? Yeah, but yeah, Bio Arcane Barrage. And well, Snoopy is now on the invade. Yeah, I really have to credit Snoopy with that bottom gank because that's exactly what a lane like Cogjanet needs against the aggressive Sona Graves is just an early advantage, which you know he's granted them by giving them the first blood and stealing away the red buff. We do have a possible gank on Wicked though up top there. There is Fenskin. He's got the double buff on, but he's going to be able to dash away from that one. No issues whatsoever. And uh, kind of give it away a little bit too obviously. So Snoopy with the double buff. Is he going to go back down the bottom? What's he thinking? Is he going to look mid? Is he going to go for Ari? Ari is going to be very hard for him to pin down, I would have thought. Bottom I'm would really be curious. ideal. Why he's, why, why he's not really doing anything. I'm wondering what's going through his head. Okay, he's waiting for Ari to push up a little bit. He's going to try a gank here. He's going to force Flash, I think. Oh, can he get the stun across? The ice oh, the building. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very well executed there by COG, and that's given them a huge advantage this early on. They chained the stuns just right so that Ari could never flash away. She died without using Flash just because she was stunned the whole time. The headbutt into kind of the mini stun, and in, and essentially, if Ari didn't flash as Alistair was headbutting, or spam his key as Alistair was walking up to headbutt, he wasn't getting away from it, or to pulverize, he wasn't going to get away from that. Because once the pulverize hits, Anivia is just going to chain stun right on top of that, you know, because Fargan has 500 games on Anivia, and he's going to land it just perfectly, and he got the kill. Yeah, meanwhile, we see at the top here, Wicked House actually just took a big chunk of damage on Extinct, dived in there, but uh, Snoopy now set ready and waiting to go. Can he continue his uh, his ganking dominance <laughs> onto him? He will manage to get the Pulverize headbutt there, but uh, Extinct will manage to get away from that one. Is he going to stick in the bush? He looks like he will, and he's going to port back. Back down the bottom, because he pings going down. Yeah, they're Level the 4 on Kog'Maw, level 2 on Graves. Yeah. Big difference already. And Looking towards the CS, it is, yeah, you can see he's already got 12 CS difference. Slepper missing with that book shot. will try to pick up as so much CS as he can as he goes, though. But uh, uh, what do you, what's your stance on these double wards down the bottom? Obviously, you didn't play support, or you, but I'm sure you probably do in solo queue. They, they love to yeah. uh, double ward it, the bushes these days. It's become a standard, really. Uh, as in, you know, ward the, the side the, bushes? The like bottom the bushes. bushes? The bottom bushes. Yeah, well, essentially what happened, it was just kind of an evolution of, of ganking. Everyone was just... Uh, warding the jungle, the jungle exits, basically. So anytime you try to exit the jungle in the river, someone would see you. So then what the junglers obviously had to do is say, okay, the only possible way we can gank is through the lane bushes. So a lot of junglers just started exclusively ganking through the lane bushes because they just assumed that the, that the river was warded. And then, you know, to counter that, now a lot of times people ward the lane bushes instead of the river. So they stay a little unpredictable and it makes the jungler you know, not so sure about how he can get successful ganks off. So Snoopy was just having a little wander, maybe thinking of going for it, but instead he's going to go return to his jungle. He's had been very successful every time he's played Alistair to date. His, uh, throughout this tournament has been, been fantastic. Kind of just gets a slow on Slepper down the bottom there. So I look back towards the top. Wicked has now come back. He is leveling up his Q again, so Broken Wings has got a double Doran's uh, blade this time, though. So going. I have to say that already, though, this is looking really bad for uh, Mistral because the two lanes where they were supposed to have the biggest advantages in early game, Anivia before she gets her ult, and bottom lane because they have sustain, Snoopy was able to gank both of those lanes and get kills. So the two lanes where Mistral was supposed to have advantages, they're now losing. Which, Which uh, spells trouble. bad things. Interesting invade here, though, from Nocturne. Will he manage to get the steal on the big Wraith? Yes, he will. Manage to uh, smite it. We'll get. Snoopy and force him backwards. And if you just come in to cover him off, so actually although Froggen didn't have any mana. And uh, actually Kennen was coming down to have a, a poke there, so it maybe that it hung around a little bit longer. I was wondering if there was gonna be some kind of extended fight, but Snoopy was just like, Nope, I'm out of here, you took my stuff, I don't care. And where is Nocturne going? Let's see, is he gonna go up towards there's no golems or anything, is he gonna maybe come around the back side of Wicked? No, nope, he's just going to back away. <laughs> builds up to nothing. What and like uh, to nothing see. really, nothing really out of the ordinary with uh, skill builds. Kennen and Riven are both maxing their Qs, which we've seen is the is the norm for all of them. Uh, Nocturne in the jungle also maxing Q, uh, just like last game. R is maxing W. And Nivea is maxing for all those Anivia fans. No points in wall. Two points in Q. Three points in E. And one point in R. So uh, he's going for the R the E damage in his combo, he just put a fourth point into it. So the whole idea is he puts a frost on them and then he gets the double damage proc from his E. 
uh, meaning it'll actually end up being a one-to-one -one IP ratio if he has the frost on them, which is probably why he's doing that. Uh, Jungle Alistair is uh, maxing his heal, actually, so I guess that's for sustaining the jungle, and he's just proccing his, uh, I don't know, proccing his trample pass from auto-attacking and just keeping his health up with heal. And then, uh, yeah, no surprises bottom lane either. Janna maxing shield, Sona maxing heal, and uh, Grace maxing buckshot. Yeah, so standard across the board. We do have these lulls. We do try and keep you up to date on these, but often... Every time yeah, we it's do really hard. I always, I always want to talk about the skill builds, and it's like, wait, something's happening. Something now happens, can, oh, yeah. Or, or if we start talking about it, we miss something. So yeah, you can, you can easily get tunnel vision to, to focus in on it. Um, welcome to commentating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it, it looks so easy, but it's just not really. Uh, oh, slapper there! The ulti going on across him. We actually have to dash away from that one. So yellow Pete really is starting to just. Put his dominance across bottom lane, which is it's true. And what happened Grace in the first game. Grace still has the hit level six, and it's nine minutes into the game. You know they have a full level advantage on bottom lane. They're just doing a great job bullying with this lane that's oh. supposed to be. And, and, oh goodness, he egged in the tower too. I don't think he's gonna get away. Look, Snoopy's gonna come up. Can he get the heal off? No, not enough. And that's gonna be a double kill back and forward. Snoopy Did storming you catch that, towards uh, it. The kill on stream. No, I completely missed it. And now he's gonna be ah. Svenska's actually gonna come around there using his spell shield, so he's gonna eat away from that one. Snoopy actually. Actually flashing in there. Not too sure if he could have gone for that. I think he missed his uh, combo, his headbutt uh, pulverized combo there, didn't he? Which is why the flash came out. No, completely okay, missed it. Completely missed the dive, unfortunately. What's going on here? Nibby just bought a soul stealer. So he's very confident in his ability to kill Ari again, is my guess. Because that's the only reason he would build that item. Hmm. <laughs> that's something you don't see in matches, in top top yeah. level matches he's feeling confident against anguish in mid that he can get more kills which is pretty impressive in itself we're gonna have to keep our eye on that one see how that plays out. I really out. don't know how he managed to solo Ari when she has her I caught her in stuns or something I, I don't know impressive nonetheless I mean that's why Froggen is gets an be banned each game because he's just really really good at it yeah so apologies for missing out on that one we went <laughs> you don't expect it in a straight 1v1. Um, I really do wish I could spot the red flashing as well. They do have little red flashing icons. Yeah. Just, I, I stare at this corner so often that uh, I sometimes <laughs> get tunneled into it and completely miss things. Especially when we're talking about things. Anyway, let's not dwell. Froggen at the moment is with that Soul Stealer, and we're going to see how that plays out because I have not seen a Soul Stealer in a long time in a match, and when I did. It went quite badly wrong. Oh, they're trying to catch out Lisa. Uh, and sorry, look Nocturne. at that damage. Even without you know any AP items other than his Soul Stealer, he takes Nocturne to half and just like one quick combo. Look towards top. How's the top lane going? We got Extinct. He's got his Hextech uh, Revolver with their armor. 69 CS. And we've got Wicked who's just been quite happy. 84 CS. So he's ahead in the CS and uh, just going about his merry way at the moment. I think Wicked's doing exceptionally well in this lane. Uh, they're it seems like naturally that Kennen would be a counter to Riven in a sense because R Riven would never be able to close to harass and he'd be able to just kind of spam all day on Riven, uh, potential gank to him down mid. But yeah, Ken is actually itemizing to stop Riven, which is not something you normally expect. He built an early chain vest, so obviously Wicked is somehow managing to close onto Kennen and get a lot of harass damage in, which otherwise he wouldn't have built that early chain vest. Nocturne coming around, showing himself on Snoopy there. He's like, yeah, I'm here. Which immediately causes the ping. So let's have a look quick down the bottom. There's a couple of pings going off down there. We are 12 minutes into this, so we are heading into potential Dragon time. And it's interesting how the game's changed, because we've, we used to have a period where Dragon was like almost certainly taking a nine minutes. And then it sort of developed into a longer Dragon phase. Is there anything that, obviously, you guys, when you were at Dig's House, would, would have gone towards specific towards Dragon, like a, a specific time? Or was it just a case of, yeah, we've got uh, this we advantage, will... let's go for it? I was fairly predictable at the time. We'd always just, usually generally when I, around the time I got Razor on a jungler, we'd try to force some kills. Bottom oh, lane. bottom lane. Yeah. And everything. Okay. We'd try to force some kills bottom lane and uh, then go for Dragon once I got Wriggles. But one of the big reasons you see a lot less Dragon now, waiting for Darkness to time out. It's an actual pretty random dive on towards the tower on Frog in there. He does have Rebirth Pops and Harry will go down with that as well. And that is just, again, backfiring. You know, it's all well and good getting the kill, but if you're just feeding it straight back, it's, it's less than ideal. And since he got the kill after he died, he gets two stacks for that instead of losing a stack. So his Soul Stealer now is giving him, what, 16 extra AP. So there we go. Very good spot. 
<laughs> and I'll, uh, I was going to get back to the dragon. Uh, w one of the reasons we're seeing sometimes in games slower dragon is that junglers that people are picking now just have less dragon control and it's sacrificed for you know more utility. Maokai and or Alistair are two apparently now popular junglers, but they have very poor dragon control. Like they don't do that much damage to dragon. You know, so it, it takes a whole team effort to it, and you can't really have that much threat on it. So it has a lot to do with you know teams. Uh, generally reacting better to teams that they know are going to go for early dragons, and also people are bringing junglers who just aren't that good at dragon control. Yeah, so Pink Ward was placed in River by CLG, so they've cleared out the ward that was instantly just been placed. So uh, <laughs> it's about the only way that, that the, <laughs> the supports get gold these days, so they're happy Yeah, with killing that. Oracle wards, it's like, yep. Well, dive up the top there, and you can see Wicked actually ignited by Instinct there. Taking pretty low, isn't going to go back though. Gotta be ballsy that. Doesn't he, he, there's something he's waiting for. How much gold does he have? He's got 1260 gold. And okay, he can, he's gonna finish his hex drinker and he probably wants to upgrade his boots as well. So he's just waiting for a little bit more gold. Well, it's. It, he's got. Uh, is he just gonna bait? Because Froggen is coming up here. Uh, it looks like that's what's gonna happen. He's got the blue buff on. He's gonna come around. He's gonna have to do it on his own because well, we oh, he's gonna go back. Kill him. Stunt straight away. He manages to put the wall up, but if Wick Stint has managed to get around there, I'm not too sure if he's gonna have enough to cut him off. Will come back around. Will he? No, just flashed out of it. Very nicely done. Will he dodge the stun? He does. Oh. Just about jukes in and around that stun and dodge the ulti as well. So very well played by Extinct there. Are we now coming up towards have Froggen up the top here? I don't think it's gonna be quite in a position to do a great deal. He's got no vision of him when he's in that uh, bushes at the top there yet, and he will back away from it. So yeah, uh, Wicked was apparently waiting on enough gold for Hex Drinker and a red elixir, so that is what he's bought. Oh, back at the top though, Froggen's battling. been engaged again. Froggen this time is has to manage to catch the stun down. He can see he's been taking it down very low and Rebirth is popped. Does will Andrews have enough, have enough damage to take it down? It looks I think like he will. Does. Wow. Ignite goes down. He knows that he's going to pop back up there. Dodges around it and very nicely played Angus there. And that is going to mean Dragon will go to CLG though while they're up the top there. So it is going to counter a Dragon to one kill. Although, unless Slepper manages to get the steal, not quite. Oh, Snooper did a good job calculating a smite there and just didn't, didn't panic smite at the right time. Wicked, meanwhile, has been feared on turret there, and is being forced away. The game is starting to step up now. The pace starting to increase. 4-3 advantage to CLG, 2-1 gold, uh, 2k gold, sorry, advantage. And, well, they're trying their best to take this down this mid turret as quick as possible. Definitely laid out a chunk of damage towards it, but definitely not going to be enough to finish the job. Although they really are sticking quite persistently with it. Bear in mind, it is two APs trying the best to take it down. Snoopy does go in, though. They're going to have... Actually, it's only Janna coming up in support. It's not going to quite be enough there. Snoopy taking a lot of damage, forced to use his ulti to try and get out of that one and keep himself in it. Now MTL think they can steal the blue. The blue isn't up at the moment. I'm trying to see what time it went. Yeah, they both, both blues went down around 13.20, so they'll be up again at, uh, in about two minutes. And they both went down at the same time. So. Okay, there's, there's Froggen switching with Riven here. No. I'm not sure. They seem to just be. There's a lot of pressure on mid from both yeah, teams, so both yep. top lanes are just kind of thinking about. It. And yet, Froggen's going top lane, which is really weird. You build the Soul Stealer and then you go into the farm lane. It's almost like a uh, confusing purchase. And of course, he hasn't got blue back up the top here either, which is yeah. less than ideal. Froggen, at the moment, has managed to get those kills. He is three for three. Back towards River. Again, that dragon was just taken him well. Don't forget by CLG. I think it was around about I think I didn't see the time actually, so I was so focused between the two. Nocturne is gonna dive in towards Wicked. Another there. big dive and Alistair's there. Just, yeah. just yeah, he's gonna have to back straight out of that one. Not successful. Back down the bottom, they're also poking back and forward. Slepper getting caught out. Howling Gale going across prepared, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. But uh Yellow Pete really feels like he's uh getting a strong hold on this lane, although the CS wise he's now very even between the two, despite the fact there was that big difference, that big level gap distance as well. It's uh, actually bang on equal, 136-136. And a 2k gold advantage for CLG, and something to keep track of again, Snoopy, just like all the other games, has bought a very early Oracles, and he's yet to be punished for that. He has not died in any of the games where he's bought an early Oracles. If he dies early, it could definitely hurt him uh, in scaling in the late game, but he's been able to stay alive uh, thus far. Okay, Froggen has just backed off, which is... Big fight going down bottom. 
Back down the bottom now. Oh yeah, Crepo. Oh, he just uses his ulti just about the perfect time. Shields himself up and he's going to walk away from it. Would you believe it? Yellow Pete now in all sorts of trouble. Can prepare to see no mana whatsoever. Can't do anything. No poke at all to continue on. Nocturne is coming down but had just used his ulti to dive on up in the mid. So he's not available. Ari also coming round. The ping goes on the ward. Yeah, this is the fear. They saw him back with off. that upward push forward and now they're CVing. So they're running all the way back to base because they don't want to get ran down by Ari. And there was a, a big chance of it as well because Ari was coming down, but I think they've already realized yet. Yeah. And they're going to back away. That's actually going to open things up. MTL going to push on this tower a fair bit. Slepper will do a large if amount of If he wants to take this tower, he can take it. For sure. A lot of times the AD carries in these games don't want to take the tower if they're winning the lane because it means... All, and we've seen a lot of the other games. Once you take someone's tower, it allows that other laner a lot of kind of free farm on his side of the map. And uh, obviously, though, they just want the global gold advantage, and, you know, they're pretty even lane, so whatever. He's going to take the gold for his team, and now they're, you know, only 1k down instead of 2. Well, they're going for Angus in the mid, though. They managed to get the wall down the stun as well. It will be an ignite as well. Will it be enough to finish the job? Will the heal from Prepare just about oh! keep him alive? I don't believe it! And he will back away from that one. Well, <laughs> if ever you needed your support to come at the perfect time, that was it. On the last tick of ignite, just like, what's up? Here's 40 health, and now you live. Oh, dear. <laughs> wow, down the bottom. Meanwhile, obviously, they're going to trade back to Towers. Graves is coming back, though. Sona with him. The uh, clairvoyance goes down. Didn't see where it was. Oh, he's gone on towards blue, actually. So it's keeping an eye on that one. And they are keeping a grip of their tower down the bottom. Riven also switched across as well with Froggen. We're joining all that one. And uh, Froggen is going to lay a big chunk of damage down towards Nocturne. But uh, we'll get walled off. Manages to just flash out Forced though. Flash. He's so good at timing those. Like the 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 Flash Frost on, I think that's the name of the skill. Yeah, the Flash Frost on Nivy is such a slow projectile. But Froggen is landing almost all of them. Like whether he knows he has vision around Oh, back the down the bottom. Corner. Prepared. He's going to get caught out. Howling Gale goes across. Yellow Pete will take him down. And uh, that should be finishing. He thought about diving on towards Slepper. I'm not too sure, but Slepper's got to be very careful. Back up towards Blue Buff now. They're also diving in there. Froggen is going to get feared off. And will he manage to be enough? I don't think he has Rebirth. If Rebirth is available, actually. Rebirth's up. So he surely, even if he gets oh, dived down, good. and now Angus actually could get caught out if he can land. Oh, the, st the tower caught him. The tower caught him, which is what killed him off. He was trying to land the final stun, the flash frost, and then comes oh, Kenan. And that will be it. Oh, very nicely played. Now Snoopy is surely going to be the target. Like we said, he had that oracle on. He hasn't been punished. Angus, so is not going to be able to catch up with him. So Extinct came down. D did he pick up the kill? I think he did. Meanwhile, down the bottom, yeah, it was it was very even yeah. between the two. So, oh, a close game again, Jad. Yeah, absolutely. I, except I also said before the game, you know, if CLD can stick in it until late, then they have the advantage, and that's exactly what they're doing. They actually had a bit of an early advantage, and uh, you know, it, it's it is yet to be seen how how well uh, Yellow Peep positions himself in team fights. But uh, that'll be the big sort of hyper carry late game that I'm looking to take over. So at the moment, Instinct, what do we think? Instinct versus Wicked at the top lane here. Tower's about to go down, or, well, it will go down in the, in the next wave or two. Um, wh what are your thoughts on it so far, how it's actually played out between these two? Will the Ancients completed, obviously, by Extinct. Wicked's been pretty much passively farming his way through it. Yeah, it definitely seems like it. Oh, uh, mid, well, mid dive. I mean, oh, he's going to get away from that one. He's on Angus actually dodging. Uh, he didn't dodge the ulti, should I say. And that's going to actually set up. I think Dragon is ready yet. And that's actually set up for COG to go down there. But uh, oh, we'll, go, we'll go back to it in a second because I think they're going to pull the Dragon out. And it looks like MTL... Well, they're ready to maybe try to follow on to it. Nocturne is up with the... Frog is winging that push. Oh, my God. Flash frosting three people and then walling them off. So, free dragon for CLG, it looks like. They will have the damage on it. You can see that Slepper's maybe thinking of going for it. Oh, tried to ulti steal, actually, I think. Tried did again, that. but Snoopy had, he had patience with his smite, and he just smited at the, at the safe amount of health. So, very well played. And but yeah, back to that top lane, what I was talking about. Riven, uh, Wicked's been... He's been pretty happily uh, passive farming on his tower. Yeah, it seemed like it seemed like Wicked actually had a bit of an edge on Kennen early, and it then forced Kennen into buying that early chain vest. But since that time, it seems like Kennen's almost taken over. Once he got the chain vest, you know, Wicked couldn't necessarily put enough harass damage into Kennen. Kennen's been pushing up, uh, caught up in CS because he was down a little bit now, and now he's even plus he's taking the tower. So uh, 
Uh, I think Kennen's sort of taken the upper hand in that team. And you also look at his build, he's almost going kind of bruiser Kennen. He has the spell vamp from his Will of the Ancients, obviously, which will heal him up in team fights. But those heals are more valuable when he builds things like the Chain Vest and the Negatron Cloak, because it, it essentially heals for more effective health, since all the damage he takes is now less, but he's still vamping for the same. So it's actually going to be really hard to kill Kennen in team fights once he's in their ult, which I guess is part of their strategy. Are you seeing this? <laughs> I am seeing this. They are wardless, but this is going to take him about 30 seconds to kill because they don't have that much Baron damage. Yeah, they've got absolutely no vision of it. They would possibly have just seen the Nocturne skill coming out there. They are, yeah. This is kind of a desperation play. I'm really wondering whether Snoop is going to scan for wards over Baron or whether he's just like, there's no way they're at Baron. And, and they okay. get it! Wow, okay. And I think, have, have they spotted it yet? Have they seen anyone yet? Now they will have realized it, yeah. Now they're like, oh, okay, what the heck just happened there? So, a very quick and early three-man Baron from MTL. I say quick that and early, That was a was desperation 23. play, but it was also really smart because their support was showing mid and their AD was showing bottom, which really, if you're ever going to try to rush Baron, who would try to rush Baron without their healer and without their AD? So it's the most unexpected kind of trio to possibly take Baron, and I think that's why COD didn't notice. The question is, how will they make use of it as well? Let's have a look towards the gold between stacked on them. Ari's actually sitting on 2,000 gold here in the mid, so could really do with going back and spending that instead of uh, wasting time hanging around the mid. 2,000 gold is a big difference on an AP carry. That's a needlessly large rod potentially there, I would have thought. Let's just see. Actually, it looks like they're just going to carry on pushing with it, so he's going to be sitting on a lot more gold by the time we finally get round to it, which is not the wisest play, I don't think, Jack. Did your, uh, I don't think, it, the stream, I have the stream on the other monitor, just went offline, I hope that's not a bad thing. Oh, we'll see, I'll get, I'll get messages, don't worry okay. if that soon starts happening, but, uh, okay. um, no, I was just saying about the, 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 the fact that Ari is sat on, what, 2,200 gold, could have, could have gone back when everybody else gone back, and now we're actually, right, with and Baron still is just sitting on the same gold, and the Baron is just kind of ticking and ticking and ticking. Yeah. And meanwhile, COG actually taking the advantage and realizing MTL's seemingly unsure on what to do with this Baron that well, they the got early. Is, you know, MTL's already taken uh, the front three towers of COG, so it's actually the opposite of what happened last game. Uh, <laughs> you know, MTL's down and kills up in towers, even in gold, which is exactly the same as what happened last game. The teams are just swapped. And once you push down that first row of towers, it's you kind of have to build up a bigger advantage before you get the second row down. They've already taken the objectives, you know, they have Baron. Dragon was killed just before they did Baron, and none of COD's buffs are up. So the only thing they really want to, would ever want to do is kind of invade a buff and steal it or force a team fight. But if you're looking to, like, kind of dive one of those upper towers, especially against someone like Anivia, who's one of the hardest champions to dive towers on, they, they kind of can't do anything. I feel like they should actually just split up and farm the lanes, because COD's group mid, you know, protecting against the Baron push, where right now... Uh, MTL should be using this this Baron buff to just kind of gain farm because there's really nothing else they can do with that advantage right now. And Ari's continuing to farm as well, going back up top as well. Two and a half K now. Um, Infinity Edge now completed by Cogmore, so going to Infinity Edge before Phantom Dancer this time. So going more for the uh, the damage on Yellow Pete, and they're going to have seen Ari up top there. They realise they're in a four v one now. Now they're in a three v of uh, 3v5, sorry, situation in the mid here. I think COG are going to push on this tower and take it down. Oh, good wall across unprepared. Having to use the flash to get out of that one. They're going to try and reverse the situation, but I don't think they're going to have enough, and that tower will go down. So COG pick up that so, one. So, I mean, just as, just as I said, they need to split up. They saw two people shopping. They had no pressure on any of the side lanes, and COG was like, wait a minute, they have Baron, but there's only three people here. Let's just push. And that's exactly what they did. Okay, so Rabadon's death cap now completed on Ari, which is probably what he was saving up for. I guess. So, I'm not one to question. <laughs> oh, and it's looking like an Invade Mistral. Looking like they want to take the blue out here. The blue's not up at the moment, though. So they don't have the timing on that. They've, they've what, double, triple ward they're going on there? There's a CV went down as well. They're coming across. Yeah. Going to push on towards this tower. They, make the, they, they feel like they've... Seems to me like they, they felt like they need to See, make use of this Baron. Push they, need idea, to, they need to hmm. make use of the Baron, and yeah, and like you say, this is, this is dangerous territory. It's like immediate danger. Nocturne... Uh, Al Snoopy flashed in to try to pick down after and he had the spell shield up. And Angus going around right. the back. Here we go. This is a full dive going on. They're going on towards Wicked by the looks of it. Wicked or Snoopy. They want to make it use of Snoopy. It has got the ulti running. Froggen also taking out very low. That will be Snoopy going down. That's going to be an Oracle drop. Froggen hasn't been dropped. Now he's been rebirthed, but he's going to be able to get away from that one. Angus, meanwhile, he's taking over. Oh my god! Crepo just flashed through straight to 
Angus's face and Instinct will just about get away from that one. Froggen is back up from his rebirth, so lives through that one. It was a three for one, I believe, in total. So, so worth it, I guess. Crazy dangerous, but I guess it worked. They they had they realized they were in about the last fifteen or twenty seconds of their Baron and they said, Okay, let's make something happen while we have this buff. Oh. And they just went for it. So well placed there. He just put the wall down, knew immediately that yeah, it was gonna default path him back to the right. Yeah, it's pretty side. crazy how well Anivian how, how well Froggen knows his character because he not only is good at aiming his flash frost, but he just he knows exactly how everyone's uh, pathing is going to default. So when he throws a Q in one place, he'll then place a wall because he knows where the guy's moving, and the wall will redirect him into the flash frost. It's crazy. Okay, Riven's going to come and try and cut off Angus. Uh, does manage to dash away and cannot solo pull that dragon, but instead Snoopate and Riven are going to try and get it before it resets. Have they got anyone nearby? They do. They have Nocturne coming round. But I think CLG may well be able to pull this one away. And Nocturne's just going to bide his time and try and get in there and smite. But, oh, Snoopy's back, though. Snoopy's back in here, so we, he has snipe as well. But it's, it's done a full reset. Meanwhile, this is delay is helping out MTL, I feel. And Graves, he has, yeah, he's got red buff now, so he's going to come around. He's got Agility Pot running as well. And this actually has turned out from a single 1v1 to a, an instant team fight. Seemingly, yeah, I think, I feel like COD is going to try to finish this. Oh, Froggen actually peels off blue to give support on Dragon, and they're going to they're gonna finish this and then go for, and then just wall. Okay. And just wall back away. So COD picking up that Dragon. They're going to try and cut them off, though. And just about dodging that Flash Frost that came from Froggen. Like you say, he's just predicting. Oh, now uh, Nocturne's dived in there. He's managed to put the Spell Shield up. He's caught with Wicked out. Crescendo goes across. Doesn't really uh, dive in for it, though. Janna knocking them all back. Meanwhile, they'll... Nocturne is in all sorts of trouble. In fact, they've had to try and use his ulti to try and defend against Wicked there. Meanwhile, going back up towards the cor corner there, Janna did get taken down as well as Stepper taking down Riven as well. So MTL coming out pretty strongly in the two for one yep. again there. But Stepper, well, he's going to have to dodge away from that one. Doesn't have any mana to continue. And they also stole away the blue buff. I didn't see, I think it was Angus that picked it up there. Yeah, so they are going to turn around. They have a big stack of uh, minions in the mid. And I think they're going to turn that advantage and take this mid turret down. Yeah, I agree. They're, they're doing a pretty good job at positioning in these team fights, and they have a bit of an early advantage. And I, I have just gave Froggen a huge compliment about his Anivia, and now I'm looking at his items, and I'm wondering if I should have done that <laughs> because he has a Soul Stealer with one stack. Well, no, okay, no two. He has two now, and a Warmogs, which is a little questionable as far as AP carry items go. But we'll see how it plays out. You know, see, well, you got to remember when, as soon as he got that soul stealer, he had to change lane, which, which kind of backfired. And at the time he got it, Snoopy was managing to land those ganks. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I do defend tank casters slightly because Anivia is one of the casters that has a huge, huge amount of sustained damage and already has a huge mana pool. So one of the important things to do if you have sustained damage is just kind of stay alive. And um, against a double AP strategy like MTL. It's potentially that he's just waiting to kind of outlast everyone in team fights. Because if you have Warmogs, and more importantly, Warmogs Egg, that's now 5,600 health that they have to take off of you, which is really hard to do with double AP burst. So there's a potential that this is a strategic play, which I mean, it has to be if he's building it, but it's still, you know, not very intuitive to see Warmogs on Anivia. But again, we are 31 minutes in, 9 8 in score, 1k gold difference between the two teams. <laughs> this is such a close, close game again between these two. Uh, who do you give the edge to at the moment? I guess Mitra, uh, Mitra Mistral, uh, because they have got the 4 1 turret advantage, and actually they are working towards the top <laughs> turret. And, well, they did have the I still, I still give the edge to up. CLG, but uh, we'll see. Just because, you know, Kogma has better items than Graves, is a better scaling character late than Graves. Uh, Anivia is going to be a huge problem late once he actually gets AP, you know, to stack on top of that Warmogs. And, uh, you know, the double AP will fade off a little bit because uh, COD is building enough survivability to sustain the burst. Yeah, and you see the, the, the damage that the E did on Extinct there. It actually wasn't that great when he uh, managed to catch him in that little combo. It really wasn't doing a great deal about it. But they are just score oh, the wall. Ooh, Look, that's ooh. one of those walls that can be... Oh, you're a hero, you've managed to catch this it's guy, or, or what the sense. hell, yeah, exactly. Oh, Nocturne's popped his ulti, who's going to go in for his Crepo, actually, Crepo having to use his ulti to get away from that one, can an ulti go straight in as well, Wicked managed to flash just about out of that one, nobody going down in the ex early exchanges, and they've all managed to back away from that one, but he might well give up the tower, I believe, but wow, exchange very close to death, Crepo and Wicked in amongst all that, but that will be the inner turret. 
so Mershaw continue to turn this And potentially even another turn if they possible. really want to push this, but no, they're going to back up. And yes, Baron has respawned. This seems like a common recurring thing for CLG. They're so good at not dying in teamfights. <laughs> like, they'll take so much damage, and they're just really good at slithering away with almost no health. Oh, and he got oh, prepared just on the back there. Will it be enough? Not enough first, though, I don't believe. Oh, Yellow Pete, in fact, might find themselves in trouble. Oh, prepared? Why did he just start walking back that way? His pathing. The pathing the, the on the wall made him go right around because he was spam clipping on the other side, and the only uh, <sighs> logical path to get through the block just path was to go around the red. Lock. Lack of reactions on seeing your, your way your summoner's going, whether he's just looking mm -hmm. down the map and clicking. Exactly. I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, very wise catch again there and prepared. I think he had an oracle on him as well there, didn't he? That was a, a pretty big He must catch. have, yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure Mistral did have an oracle and they have no oracle up right now, so it must have been on Sona. So, that's so an even more valuable kill. And now they, no, they'd be crazy to go for this, yeah, and they wisely back so away I really from feel it. like CLG, they, they, they need a window for everyone to shot because Anivia, they, they went back one at a time there because they didn't want to risk sending back Kog'Maw and Anivia because then they could have easily formed Baron if they found out, but they kind of went back one at a time. So oh. now that they see that M, uh, If you look MTL at the gold, you can see it's actually Angus that's sitting on another 2,700 gold again. Wow. Throughout all that. In fact, there's only 1,000 so gold more. <laughs> he's, he's way ahead. 11,000 gold, 434, so uh, 255, so he's the highest CS and the highest killer in the game at the moment. So yeah, he's really having a great job. 1,000 ahead of both uh, Yeah, Wicked both has 261. But yeah, he is the highest gold. Wicked has actually managed to farm oh, yeah. a little bit. So, uh, as it stands, anything that's really, really coming out to you on these builds at the moment? We've obviously had a look across, and we've got Death by Grasp now, actually, just been picked up by Ari. Well, if you look at everyone on CLG, and this is another thing about how kind of well they understand how the team comps are working, everyone on their team is building a little bit of extra survivability just because of the way that double AP burst teams work with sort of Ken and Ari. So as long as they can withstand that kind of initial burst from the Ken and Alfie and the Ari dancing in, then they pretty much win the fight and they can just roll over from there. So that's why you see a giant spell on Kennen. That's why you see an Aegis on Alistair to give everyone the little bit of extra resist. You notice MTL doesn't have an Aegis because they're not necessarily worried about huge amounts of AoE. You know, Froggen built the Warmog, so he's definitely worried about it. And uh, Wicked has stacked a ton of MR off of like mid-tier items like Mercury, Tread, Spirit, Massage, and Extra. So, um, I nearly called him McLaren, but Froggen has managed to get a uh, an Archangel Staff this time. So, finally getting a bit of mana and a little ability bit of power. AP. How much does not he have? A great now? deal of AP in there, but uh, it's definitely Two more than he has. Really not that bad. So, at the moment, you can see they're keeping them busy and taking the dragon away. So, I think that's the first okay, dragon we've picked up. Taking objectives, you know, they stole the blue, they stole the dragon. So, there's still something about CLG in their stalling tactics. They're saying, okay, it's still not quite time to try to force fights. I think we'd still lose. So, they're just kind of conceding a lot of these objectives because they don't want to lose the game before they, you know, power up too much. Okay, now I'm going to give you a, a, a quick shout out to the boar as well. I think he's put a, a thread up on. Read it, and it's actually a background of the Kings of Europe. Uh, it's actually for the, the the background thing I'm using in the moment, the League of Legends thing. So, uh, a shout out to him because obviously a lot of people have been asking for that. Anyway, back to that, back to yeah, the match. It is uh, nine nine, very even game, and uh, Mr. Well. You talked about late game. It's all about COG, and we are closing in on that late game. We Can they catch Crepo? Like well, they're going to actually closer. catch him out all sides. Oh. Ari were completely destroyed there. Snoopy catching him beautifully, and that's put Mistral right on the back foot. Snoopy with that ulti, and that's just forced them completely away. Actually, just on the bottom corner of your screen, I'm not too sure whether people managed to catch Ari getting caught. I just saw Snoopy and now they can whizzing through. Take a blue right back. They got one stolen from them. Now they give it to Anivia, who is much, much, much more powerful with blue buff. And they stole the blue buff because Yellow Pete managed to get the kill on Ari. So and I feel like they're going to force a Baron here. They're, they're, and they have the perfect peel with stuff like Alistair and, um, and uh, I was going to say McLaren wall, a Nivea wall for when they try to run in. And that will be, yeah, and there you go. And they're actually just peeling them immediately and they're maybe trying to rush down Baron. They're going to put them into a sense of panic now that they've had no vision for so long. Oh, and they're going to try and pile straight in there. Whoa! Oh, what is this? Who gave it? It was Snoopy that actually paused it. Froggen can't move. That's an issue, but it's like the second Kennen's <laughs> diving in there. <laughs> oh, really bad timing. Yeah. Oh, my. I, I imagine everyone watching the like, what? And they just kind of freeze. And so, they're probably ah! them. Yeah. Because that's exactly right. It's like, what just happened? Time to discuss <laughs> strategy, <laughs> GG. Uh, we actually had this at uh, Kiev where 
Um, I think one of the PCs crashed or something. Something went wrong with one of the PCs. It was on. It wasn't Candy Panda, but Candy Panda was basically caught in amongst three people. It was against Dignitas, wasn't it? The SK, uh, the <laughs> third place playoff, and, and it's just like. I, I was stood by Dignitas as it happened. This guy was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Lots of really swearing came out as it happened. Okay, then we're pausing. It can move during this fight or not, because that'll decide the whole thing. Okay, yeah, Froggy can move. They have dived in. Crescendo goes straight across. It wasn't quite enough, but COG did get taken down pretty low in amongst it. Will it be enough to finish them off? Though they don't have enough. Oh, Snoopy just dodges out of the side. And, and if you look, a... it's all because of the things that COG built. Everyone who built a small amount of survivability lived because they built that small amount of survivability. Otherwise, that would have been a triple kill for Kennen. Just great item builds by COG. And here's the late game that we were talking about. It seems like they finally reached it, and now they can start winning. Yeah, and that's definitely turned it in their favour. 12-9, they have the Baron, and, well, wisely, a couple of them are back in. They've got a lot of gold in them, so why not? And they are also clearing out the lanes as well, because they need the, the top and the bottom lane also to be going in sync with them as they try to push through. I think they're going to go probably mid. It's generally been the usual spot they go. And at, at this position, CLG, okay, clearly in an advantage. We've talked about MTL, what do they do in this position? But what do you do in CLG's position? They're like, right, okay, we've just won a good team fight. We've just got the Baron. What's our objective now? Well, the thing about the thing about CLG, which is a much more luxurious position to be in than Mistral, is they know they have the late game. So now that they've pulled the lead, all they have to do is just play sort of conservatively and just take as many small advantages as they want. Uh, they have the timer on Dragon. They have the timer on Baron. What they should be doing is to just be going around, clearing buffs, maintaining the farm, making sure they get the next Dragon, and just making sure they slowly gain a bit more of a lead. And then the next time that Mister wants to concede, you know, one of those big fights like a Baron or a Dragon, you know, CLG will be there, but they'll be even stronger than they were last time. Oh, and they're just going to push it straight up mid because they know Angus is missing, so there's no reason to just yep, prevent themselves. That's exactly what they're doing. And they've do, actually yep. dived in there as well, trying to get the kill. Oh, just as he actually dashed away, I wasn't sure where the headbutt was going to follow straight through. Oh, and they managed to catch. Prepared out, Nocturne goes down, Graves goes down, one more. The stun can only last so long on that turret, Cogmo picks up. Well, you know, or, you know, I was just going to get into it, or they could just win the game right away. <laughs> that, was, that, was the la that was the next thing I was going to say. <laughs> uh, obviously, they caught Anguish away and saw 4v5 with Baron. They dove in perfectly, they a Nivy wall behind them, Alistair crushed them up against it, got the pulverizer on the whole team, and they just, good game, this is it. Yeah, GG well played, and so that means it's going to be CLG versus Moscow 5 in the finals. Now, the finals will take place on Tuesday, so uh, that will be, uh, well, you check the Reddit thread. I'm not too sure the exact time zones, but uh, I think as they dive in, Angus tries to tries to get a last-minute kill and does get it onto Yellow Pete there. And he also, can he get it onto Froggen as well? The turret actually hits well, him. Gets stunned well, How many stacks does he have now? He, he just about oh. gets it. Doesn't okay. matter. There it is. So, GG well played, and CLG really... They, they hung on for a while in there against Mistral, and then, like you said, they had that opportunity late game and just managed to land it just about in time. And Very well played, very well built as well, and tactically, a superb game. Both games very, very impressive between these two. So I think, yeah. you know, Mistral, we hadn't seen them. Well, I, I've seen them a few times. You hadn't seen them, but I'm guessing you're pretty impressed by them now. They're still really good. I mean, just chalk another one up for, though, for Warmog, Soulsteel, or Nivea. We're going to see that explode in solo queue now, and I can't <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, hence the sarcasm in my voice. But, yeah, it was just... I suppose if the ribbon pick was really something that uh, Ang Angus could play, I think CLG really capitalized on knowing that maybe MTL is just going to go double AP, and CLG has really good strategies against double AP. They're really good at playing safe, barely escaping team fights, And that's, that's the thing about double AP. They just, they're not that great at focusing specific targets in team fights, especially that particular type of Ken and Ari uh, double AP nuke strat. There's just really nothing they can actually focus and lock down on. So for people with uh, you know so much experience of just escaping fights with almost nothing like COG has, they just it kind of plays right into their hands. And they just played really, really solid. But at the same time, they were really close to losing both these games <laughs> in a couple different places. So uh, great job by both teams. And, and a 2 for and again, it's just it's just those small things in these games that have turned it. And you got to remember that CLG were two zero up very early on in this game as well. They had mm -hmm. Snoopy came out and did just perfect uh, attacks. And like you say, he went zero one ten. He only lost once. Had that early oracles and and got away with it. Yeah, and that's just another thing. Uh, I mentioned at the time how important that early kill was, and thinking back at the grand scheme of the game, it's even more important because we knew that MTL had the early mid game advantage. 
And the fact that CLG was with Snoopy was able to pull off those two early ganks. And even after they, they pulled off those two early ganks, they still pretty much lost the early mid game. So you can imagine how far behind they would have been if they wouldn't have gotten those two early ganks. So that is it for tonight. And, uh, well, tomorrow it will be third, fourth place. So it's going to be Mistral versus Cypher tomorrow. That will be, uh, I think, I'm going you know, to check the thread, actually. I'm not going to think. I'm going to check. And I'm gonna <laughs> You're going to check and make sure you have everything actually right. Actually, make sure I read, because I don't want people turning up late. There's nothing worse than missing a game or missing the start of a game. Uh, mm -hmm. It will be Cypher, obviously, versus Mistral as soon as... Uh, my thread loads. I have managed to put it on there. So it's going to be 6.30 Central European time. That's 5.30 uh, UK time. That's 12.30 Eastern Standard time. In That's lunchtime, that is, not uh, night time. And 9.30 mm -hmm. a.m. Pacific Standard time. That's going to be the third place playoff and exactly the same times for the grand final on the Tuesday. So you can catch all them games. If you do miss them, it will be obviously on the own stream, which is the ogaming.tv, as well as my YouTube channel, which is 4DMAN, as number 4 and DMAN. And, of course, also on Chips and Noi, which is going to catch the French stream and the English stream. And, of course, the matches that we did miss in the group stages, hopefully we're going to be able to get the replays working and we will try to restream them or cast off them or do whatever we can with them. So, uh, hopefully, they can put commentary onto those as well. But, uh, Jap, thank you very much for joining me again today. It's been some pretty awesome games. I know you got up at, like, you were starting streaming. It was, like, was 6 a.m., I think, at your Yeah, I, I may have woken up at 6 a.m. Yeah, so, so it's it's been a, a long day for you guys. It's 8 o'clock here, so we've done around about 8 hours casting once again. So, uh, it has been some pretty epic matches, though. So, well, well worth it so uh absolutely these semifinals were in incredible I, uh, this was the only game i think that l that locked in it under 40 minutes and it was 39 49 you know so <laughs> some pretty long crazy back and forth games so very very good game so uh join us tomorrow guys it will be third place playoff it will be which is actually let me give you the money breakdown as well because first place is 1500 euros second 700 euros and 300 euros for third place but uh really it's more important that it's brought these awesome teams together in a quick inv invite invitational so uh, thank you very much for Zeus Republic of Gamers for uh, doing that and bringing this Kings of Europe tournament together and if this has been a success which I'm pretty sure it has been I think there's talk of a second one coming up as yeah, well. Yeah so we're so, pretty uh, close to 50,000 viewers there at the very end of this game yeah, so it seems to just pick up steam the more it's on which is great. It's, it's when the big games get going which is always yeah. nice and, and 50k viewers for Essentially, a semi unadvertised. You know, it's not embedded on the the League of Legends, which is which immediately adds probably a hundred thousand onto things. Yeah, fifty thousand on the on the tournament, which is organised by you know a couple guys and a sponsor. It's it's really impressive, and hopefully this encourages more people to get tournaments like this together because they can see how successful they could potentially be. It is, and of course, it needs a bit of pimping love. So thank you very much for Riot for posting on their uh, competitive League of Legends dot com site as well. So uh, absolutely, and it had I think it had front page announcements as well for the Kings of Europe this weekend. So. So, tons it, of great stuff. Yeah, very good. So, uh, thanks for the support. This is obviously eSports League of Legends. This is what they want to really push. And it is working, and it shows why it's fantastic. So, anyway, we are done for tonight. So, thank you very much for listening, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the small bit of lag hiccup we had there. That was a simple case of restarting Owned, and it worked straight away. So, uh, thank you very much for Owned if they did something in the background that I'm unaware of, which may well have happened. So, uh, we'll be back tomorrow at the... Uh, the nice and comfortable time for you, uh, which will be 5.30 UK. So uh, feel free to check out Reddit, check my Twitter, QVDMan. Uh, I would say check Jat's Twitter, but he doesn't use that one anymore, so you can't check that. Check out all the people that are streaming as well. So don't just scatter into the wind. Go towards Scara's stream. He started streaming now. You may be unaware of it. Go towards some of the Moscow 5 guys that have been streaming. They're all up and running now. They want some viewers as well. You can see Alex performing some miracles over there. Don't forget to check out, obviously, the COG guys. They've got their EU commentators as well for their scrims, etc., which you may be able to catch after this game anyway. So that is it for me. I am done. I can stop waffling, and I'll let you go. So uh, we shall see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening, guys.